Jay and Bertram is the attorney in the area of several counties. Thanks, Sam. How's everybody? Nice to talk to you. Okay, camera right there. Thank you. My pleasure. It is an honor to be here. Uh, well, what I'd like to do is just tell you a little bit about why I ran, a little bit of my background, uh, kind of some things that have gone on this week in the legislature. It's been funnel week, which is when everything's got to get through committee or it dies. So lots of activity. And then really just open it up, because you probably have questions and I don't want to spend the whole time boring you. Um, so I spent 25 years in the Air Force. I flew uh, fighters, F-16s, F-4s, UH-1 uh, helicopters, had a couple combat tours in Iraq. Uh, finished up as the base commander at Andrews Air Force Base, which is the home of Air Force One. So I was the guy whenever the president would fly in on Marine One or Air Force One. Um, if you watch TV, you always see that guy, that Air Force guy that greets him, that was me. So I would greet him, walk him between the two, or whenever he played golf, which was just about every weekend when the weather was nice, um, I would greet him at the first tee and then uh, pick him up at the at the 18th green as well. So I got about 130 second conversations with him, which was kind of kind of fun and really an honor, although he and I don't agree on much politically, it was still an honor. Um, retired from the Air Force in 2012, and I worked at Goodwill of the Heartland for two years. Uh, wanted to continue to serve in some way, and Goodwill is a great, let me get this for too, is a great nonprofit to serve. With disabilities, homeless vets, and I'm responsible for a couple of um, work centers that employ people with disabilities. And uh, we started a cookie business, employed homeless vets in the Quad Cities, and did a bunch of other cool things. And then uh, I had been out of the Air Force for less than a year, and I was unhappy with the direction our country was going. And I was starting to talk to some people about things I had seen and I lived in Sweden, which is a social democratic country, and have seen what social democracy looks like. And we can talk about that if you're interested in it, but I would not recommend that for lots of reasons. And I was concerned because I felt like our country was on a very slow slide towards a social democratic form of, of government. So I wanted to get involved, and somebody encouraged me to run. And so I did. And I felt like I'd been pretty well equipped in the Air Force to, to be able to do this sort of thing. Um, I have learned that it's really important to be able to work with all kinds of different people and find common interests to get things done. And that's very much the same as it was when I was in the Air Force. It is because that's a joint base with the Air Force Marines. And while I was the base commander, I didn't have any authority over a number of the other organizations that operated off of the base. Um, and some of those were actually commanded by uh, general officers. I was just a colonel. So I had to figure out how to work with all these people to get everybody to work together to accomplish things. And we accomplished a lot when I was there. We, um, our team, we opened the first charter school uh, on a military base that was incredibly successful. And it was a, a joint. I guess Republican, Democrat uh, sort of thing. We actually worked with the teachers unions on that, which was quite a feat. Um, and we did a lot of other, other things then and had uh, a great deal of success. We were selected as the number one Air Force led joint base. Um, so the lesson I learned there is that if you can figure out how to work with people, uh, you actually can get some stuff done. And so uh, since getting into the legislature, I've actually made friends with some people you might think would be unlikely for a fairly conservative Republican, and uh, have been able to work with them on things we can agree on. Uh, so, for example, um, I introduced a bill that would uh, toughen our law against synthetic drugs, Caitlin Spice. You guys heard of that stuff? Probably not. Um, and uh, the guy who co sponsored that was a guy named Art Stade, who's a Democrat from Cedar Rapids, and um, he was concerned about it because one of his constituents um, had a, a son who was a veteran from Afghanistan, had post-traumatic stress, got addicted to this stuff, and killed himself. And, and you know, I'm concerned about veterans, and I dealt with this back at, uh, in the Air Force, and so we had a common interest. We worked together, and, and now it looks like we're actually going to get a really good law through. So. Um, I will tell you when I ran, um, 
people ask why why are you running, and what I would tell them is I, I'm running because I want to do my part to make Iowa a shining city on a hill, a place of opportunity where people live, work, grow, achieve their full potential, and live abundant lives. And to get there, I'm going to fight for those timeless American values of individual liberty, lower taxes, limited government, and getting our education system back to number one. And I'm happy to say that I have held to those principles since I've gotten into the Iowa House and have a number of bills that I've either voted for, uh, chaired, or introduced under each of those different, different things. So that is probably enough about me. But what is on your guys' minds? What are, what are you interested in? What issues are burning? And are we being filmed or not? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Anybody? Sure. Yeah. My, yeah. Big one to start off. And what's your name? Just tell me your name. Ethan. Ethan. Oh, you're. Yeah. You're Ethan Louder. Yes. Okay. Ethan has already lobbied me on, on one issue and another issue indirectly as well. Yeah. Okay, so my question would be how do you feel about the amount of education funding with the governor's budget? Yeah, that's a great question. Can I use the board? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Everybody wants us to have a great K-12 education. Um, you guys are in a little bit of a different, different uh, place, and I'm a big supporter for... Um, for uh, school choice, so charter schools, the Iowa tuition grant, uh, educational savings accounts, which is a big issue coming up now. But if you're talking, are you talking about public education, K-12? Okay. So here's, we have $100 million in available new revenue for the year coming up. And that's not a political number, that's given to us by the Revenue Estimating Committee. So oh, I said 100 million, 200 million, sorry. 200 million. Um, the governor and the House, which is led by the Republicans, have proposed spending 1.25% plus 50 million, which equals roughly 100 million. The 1.25%, that's an increase over last year's funding for K-12. And this $50 million is for the Teacher Leadership and Compensation Program, which was a reform passed la um, in the last two years, last session, in order to improve education in the state of Iowa. So we want to use half of that available new uh, revenue for K-12 education. This number... Um, this number is uh, the third highest increase over inflation in the last 11 years. You don't get that when you read the paper. It sounds like, you know, the, this number is way too low, we're not spending any money on education. It's just not true. Because the inflation rate in the Midwest is below 1%. So it's actually, compared to inflation, it's a pretty big increase. And when you add in the 50 million, 100 million is actually a 3%. So we passed that in the House. Um, one thing I'll add to that is other bills we have coming due that would have to come out of this $200 million because it's new spending would be we've got $142 million for property tax reform. Medicaid is going up by $206 million. So you can see you take $100 plus $142 plus $206 and you're well above the $200 million of available new uh, revenue. So we've got a problem. We're going to have to cut in order to make the budget work because we in the Iowa House will not spend more than we take in. We just won't do it. Um, the Senate has passed 4% plus $50 million, which comes out to roughly $212 million. 